According to a new poll conducted by the Israeli Movement for Governability and Democracy, or Mishilut, it seems as though a majority of the Israeli public is now convinced that legal and judicial officials in Israel hold a left-leaning bias. The survey sampled 621 people and was conducted in partnership with the Rafi Smith Institute. And the results are shocking to say the least. Apparently, as many as 70% of respondents believe that the Supreme Court President Esther Chayut, Attorney General Mandelblit, Deputy Attorney General Zilber, and State Attorney Shai Nitzan, among others, are all biased to the left. And joining me now to discuss the implications of these results is attorney, public diplomacy expert, and lecturer, Ran Bar Yoshafat. Ran, thank you so much for coming back in today. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. All right, so, you know, where do you place the blame if there is blame to be placed for, for these figures, for these results? I think that it's not a matter of pointing fingers. The thing is that Israel doesn't have a constitution. One of the chapters that's missing in our constitution is describing the relationship between the legislative branch and the judicial branch. Mm -hmm. um, what we see now is that the judicial branch interferes in the legislation process. And in Israel, usually the public votes to the right, but sometimes the policies seem to be not really going the way that uh, our elected representatives have hoped for. And the main reason would be the Supreme Court and or the legal advisors. Uh, so I think that the 70% is not a real surprise. And in order to solve it, we need to decide as a society, how do you want to have this, um, this balance to be? And I'll just want to go on with this point. I always ask my friends from the more far left, I'll tell them if the Supreme Court would have 15 Supreme Court judges who are all uh, right wing settlers, would you still want the Supreme Court to has to have so much power like it does now. And they're always saying, no, of course not. So, so basically they're saying we're happy with so the, the Supreme Court. So the shoe's on the other foot. Yeah, and, I, and, and what I argue is that we need, we need to have a system that is fair if you're in the coalition or the opposition. Mm. But, okay, but again, you know, for the sake of argument, in the United States, for example, when you have a judicial system that is meant to uh, balance the power uh, in the United States government, in Israel, isn't it doing that to a degree, you know, by interpreting laws and saying, hey, you can or cannot do this. So I would argue that the most progressive uh, American would say the Israeli uh, judicial system is crazy. Uh, America had their uh, Marbury versus Madison. We don't have that because we don't have a constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the Israeli Supreme Court is going to talk about the nation state law and going to say if it's con constitutional or not, which is like saying the Supreme Court of America is going to see if the constitution in America is constitutional. So there is a problem here that the Supreme Court, in a sense, is in, instead of being a body that's supposed to do its checks and balances, it is the body that basically sets the, the tone of everything. And in my opinion, that's not democratic. Now, I'm, not, I'm really opposing those who say uh, we need to take a bulldozer and destroy the Supreme Court. That's really far from my attitude. Sure. But to think that there's a group of people who are wiser than the rest of the public, so if they say something, then all of the, the public's decision should be canceled, that's not, that's not democracy. Okay, so what, what does this mean then in terms of faith in public discourse in, in, uh, uh, in the democratic process, in the, you know, in the judicial system? What, is, what, is that, what are the implications of that on, on you know, again, just faith and participation in, in the public system? Well, I think we would all love to live in a society where people believe in the judicial branch and also in the legislative branch and the police and so on and so forth. Um, the Supreme Court has 56 or 57 whatever family members that until the past elections would de facto nominate themselves because of the committee that uh, nominates the judges. You cannot touch their salary, you cannot fire them. I think it's very good that the public is also having a more suspicious um, attitude towards the Supreme Court because it's healthy for citizens to have some sort of uh, suspicious attitude toward, towards the government. And in that I include the judicial branch. But I do think that in order for us to solve these conflicts, we need to have better uh, understanding of how we balance the legislative branch and the judicial branch. And how, how can that be done? Another basic law, would, will be, which will be basic law legislation. And I okay. do know that uh, the current Minister of Justice, Ayel Sheked, she plans to do this on the next term. If you ask me, if once we have that, basically Israel can have a constitution because uh, if you'll put all of the basic laws and the one that sets the norms between the different branches, then, then we have basically everything you need in order to have a constitution. All right. Well, uh, it'll be interesting if we ever get there. Uh, let's hope for the best. Ran, thank you so much for coming sure. in. Thank you very much.